And then all together, inhale, bring hands to heart center. Share the crown of three times. Take a breath in. Oh. Oh. And counting down, slow, deep breath, four, three, two, one. Inhale up to neutral tabletops. You're probably on your wrist. I'm going to stay on my uh, forearms. But I'd like you to notice, because we'll be doing variations of the cow and cat in different positions. Remember, when we look up, we're lifting the sits bones up towards the sky and relaxing the belly. So the belly drops, the sit bones come up. At the same time, we're scooping the chin up and the head comes back. But we don't let our shoulders come near the ears. We're still pushing through the shoulders. When I exhale, I initiate that movement first by bringing my hips forward. This is that uh, forward pelvic tilt. Once I felt that I tilted my pelvic forward, that's when I start to round the middle, upper back, and cut the chin. And then I just release and do the opposite, okay? It's important to, to understand that as you exhale, you initiate with the pelvic tilt. All right, let's begin. We're in neutral tabletop, and inhale, look up, drop belly. And then exhale, pelvic tilt, Round the back, cut the chin. Again, inhale. And exhale. Continue. On your own pace, really looking at that awareness of the mechanics of the motion. This is one of the best things to do if you have a sore lower back. It's also really good for the psoas muscle in terms of being aware of it and relaxing. Let's each do it two more times and meet a neutral tabletop. Meeting in neutral tabletop, <clears throat> go ahead, sit back into Madrasa so you can see your computer screen while I demonstrate something. 
All right, you probably are all going to be in downward facing dog dogs on your uh, hands and wrists. I'm going to show you in the dolphin position so that you can see the movement of my back foot. Curl the toes under, just watch for now. As you exhale, you come into your downward facing dog. Okay, as you can see in this position, my six bones are pointing up. My head is nice and relaxed, the belly is soft. And as I, let me see. As I exhale, I'm going to bring the pelvis in. See this motion? I'm going to pelvic tilt right here. Shift the weight over the shoulders. Bend the knees. And then as I inhale, I push back and look how I let go of that pelvic tilt and float the hip points or sit bones up and push back and come back into my original position. So it's the same thing, that movement that we do in cow and cat, but we're doing it from a downward facing dog. So go ahead, come into downward facing dog. I'll meet you there. So in downward facing dog, you're letting your head just hang down. You're looking probably at your feet. Take a breath in. And you exhale, pelvic tilt, bend knees, shift weight over your wrists. Your knees are nicely bent. Start shifting back, lifting the six bones up towards the sky. All right, for my mistake, I've done the breathing just exactly opposite. So let's begin again. As you inhale, pelvic tilt. Shift the weight forward, bend the knees. As you exhale, shift back, lift those hips up. So it's a beautiful wave. And again, on your own. Exhale as you go down. I mean, inhale as you go down, exhale as you go up. Sorry, sorry. Inhale as you come down. Exhale as you take that wave up. One more time. Let's stay here, downward facing dog. As you exhale, release down to your knees and child's pose. Sorry about that, guys. We'll, we'll come back to that. Inhale, come back to neutral tabletop. We've done this before. Go ahead, extend that right leg laterally beside you. Try and keep your left hip over your left knee. And here again, we do cat and cat. So inhale, you look up. And exhale, initiate with the pelvic tilt, round the back, head the chin. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, and exhale, one more, inhale, and exhale. Come back to neutral tabletop. Let's bring that right knee back into position. Extend the left leg out. Check your position best that you can. Your right hip and right knee are nicely aligned. Let's begin, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Do two more. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Come back to this for tabletop. Exhale to child's pose, really lengthen the back here. And one more time, without my mistake, let's inhale to neutral tabletop and exhale to downward facing dog. Starting with the inhale. Pelvic tilt, shift weight, drop knees. 
And then as you exhale, you push right back into your downward facing dog, lifting up those hips. Sit bones. Inhale. Wave it down. Exhale, come on. Inhale, wave it down. And exhale, come on. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Hold here. And then to exhale, let me come down to your knees and try to close them. And come on to the dropping out with the head, lengthen the back just a little bit more, and then to inhale, draw the hands back. And we're sitting in the drop neck and slightly lifting on our thighs. Roll the shoulders up and back. And your next exhale, release the bow. And grab your belt or a long uh, towel to help you. And then lay down on our back. So as we go through some of these uh, lengthening poses, it, it mostly looks like we're trying to lengthen the hamstring, but we're also trying to relax the lower back. So if at any time you find that your hips are no longer squared, that you're, you have one buttocks lifting off the mat, or you feel that you have a, a more tension in the lower back, then release the pose just a little bit. Don't do it as deep, all right? Let's put our belt on our right foot. Extend both legs down the mat. Take your hands and just feel where your hip bones are. Feel that it's nice and square. Let's look at your lower back. It should be comfortable. If it's not comfortable, maybe you need to put um, another little cushion underneath your butt just to lift up the butt a little bit. What, what we're really doing is finding a bit of a pelvic forward tilt to help take the tension off the lower back. All right, simply bringing our right leg up towards the sky. All together, take a breath in. Exhale, contract. Feel the tilt first, and then you just float the leg up. As it comes up, you can switch your hand placement so that you feel a nice lengthening through the hamstring and the back of the leg, but you don't want to open up the hip to the side or uh, have the right hip bone forward in front of the hip, the left hip bone. All right, so let's hold here, wherever that is. And stay here for a bit. The thing about a yoga practice, especially a physical yoga practice like this, once we've mastered just the mechanics of the pose, like I talked about yesterday, it literally is about getting out of your own way. Don't overthink it. The pose, once you achieve the pose, all you want to do is get out of your own way and breathe. Literally, that's it. The rest will happen. Stay here a little longer. Nice static pose. Again, if you feel your lower back, that some tension is creeping in, loosen your pose a little bit. Just relax a few centimeters. And your next exhale, if you'd like, perhaps you can deepen 
the stretch just a little bit without introducing more tension. Might be just a millimeter of release or lengthening that you feel. That's great. And let's count down four, three, two, one. What I'd like you to do is release your hands from the belt, bring your hands to your hip points. Feel your hip points left and right. And as you exhale, gently release that right leg down. And just kind of review if your hip points are still squared up. And as you come down, you want them to be square. All right, let's switch legs, bringing your left foot into the loop of your belt or around your towel. Now, it really helps if you have a slight flexion in the ankle that helps keep alignment of ankle, knee, and hip and keeps your hips square. All right. Okay, all together, take a breath in. And so and try to fill that tilt and then bring the left leg up. Maybe check your hip points with your hands. You're satisfied that they're square. Take a hold of that belt. Find a position where you feel some lengthening, but you're not in stress or distress. And let's hold. You'll know if you're turning your hip out because your knee is pointing inward or outward instead of just straight down at the mat. The stronger your concentration on simply breathing and getting out of your head, the deeper the relaxation and lengthening of the muscle. Our teacher used to tell us that thinking is sinking, sinking, and stinking. So he said, stop thinking. Just let the process work. And your next exhale, let's see if we can deepen the pose a little bit. Again, without introducing distress, taking the full weight of your leg into your biceps or arms, however it is that you're holding on.
to come out of the pose, release your hands from the belt, feel your, your hip bones in front, and then as you exhale, release that left leg down. Take the belt off, roll on your side, come to a sitting position so that you can see the computer. All right. For most of us, well, actually, I don't know if it's most of us. For some of us, opening the hip laterally poses challenges. So I want to show you some of the things to look out for and find the balance. All righty? So I'm going to bring my right leg up. Inhale, exhale, contract, tilt. Okay, got my leg up. Look at my, my thigh, my butt, and my, and my lower back. See where it is touching? Okay. As I exhale and open up the right leg, you can see that I have lost contact with my lower and two middle back, see that? So what is happening is I'm not opening up my hip, I'm just twisting my back. But I am feeling a nice lengthening here on the inner thigh. But I'm not really opening up my hip joint that much. For me to keep my lower back and this full left buttocks on the mat, let's see. I actually have a very, very close, you can see, sorry about this, a very, very close angle in my hip. But when I'm in this, I can work on relaxing the hip joint and the muscles around it, but I feel no lengthening at all in the inner thigh. So individually, each of us have to figure out when we do this lateral um, opening, where do I find the balance where I feel some nice lengthening? Because for me, I want to lengthen my inner thigh without taking the, without getting too much of a, of a twist in the back. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and lay down, put your belt on your right leg. And as we come into this lateral opening of the hip, just keep that in mind. You want to Find some kind of balance between the integrity of your back, opening of the hip, lengthening of the inner thigh. All right, we're all in position. Take a breath in, exhale, contract, tilt. Let's bring that right leg up. Hang on to your belt, wherever it may be. You can bring your left hand out to the side or next to your hip for stability, wherever you want to do it. As you exhale, open up the right hip. And as you open it up, figure out the balance between the hip, inner thigh, and back. I like to think about anchoring my left buttocks and left lower back on the mat as best I can, but it's still lifting up a little bit. Okay, let's hold here with this nice awareness. Let's stay here.
As you exhale, let's see if we can perhaps deepen the pose just a little bit. Remember, it's about finding release and relaxation, not pushing into any position. And let's count down four, three, two, and one. Now to bring our right leg back up in the center, we need to use our core muscles. So all together, take a breath in, exhale, contract, so go that leg back up. As you exhale again, let's see if we can bring the right leg towards the head. Feel a nice lengthening there. Square your hip points. All right, just listen to my words very slowly and carefully. Bend the left knee and plant the left foot behind your left foot. And then see if you can deepen the lengthening of that right leg a little bit more. So what has happened? We have changed not so much the angle, but I guess you could say the pressure or the lengthening on the left side of the body, which sometimes frees up that lower back and allows us to have a little deeper lengthening of the right leg. Now, keeping your right leg where it is, and we're just playing around, we're just experimenting. As you exhale, slowly, slowly take that left heel, drag it down the mat, and straighten the left knee. You can see if you see any difference in terms of tension, lengthening, either on the left or the right side. Let's hold here. Counting down, four, three, two, and one. As we exhale, let's slowly release that right leg back up. As it comes down, go ahead and redo your hip points. And let's switch legs. Let's bring the left foot now into the belt. All together, take a breath in. Exhale, contract, tilt, blow that left leg up. And getting ready for that lateral opening here. Take a breath in as you exhale, open the left leg towards the left side. Again, just as we did with the right, find that balance. So that you're not taking the opening in the twist of the back, but rather anchoring the back and right buttocks, keeping your hips nice and squared. You may have to release your hands and actually put your hands on your hip points to see where you are. And then just relax into it. And let's hold you.
Do your best to take the weight of your leg into your form, into your bicep, so that you just let gravity open up that joint and lengthen the muscles. On your next exhale, let's see if we can deepen the pose a little bit, opening up that angle of the hip. You can track your progress in your yoga practice. Just by looking at your breath, is your breath still even, slow, and rhythmic when you deepen the pose? That's our goal. If it is not, and with awareness, you cannot bring that breath back into a slow, even pace, go ahead and release the pose just a little bit until you can bring your breathing back to a comfortable rhythm. And then let's bring that leg back up to center. So all together, take a breath in. And so we can try to flow the leg to center. And then let's see if we can lengthen the leg by bringing the leg towards the head. Square off your hip points. When you're satisfied, slowly, carefully, go ahead and bend that right knee, bring the right foot behind the right buttocks. And perhaps we can lengthen that left leg a little bit more without sacrificing the hip points. They're still squared off. Okay, you feel good. As you exhale, go ahead, slide the right heel down, straighten that right knee. And hold here.
Counting down four, three, two, one. As you exhale, gently release that right leg down the mat. Perhaps bring your hands to your hip points just to know where you're where they are as you lower that left leg down. Let's release the belt, bring it to one side. Knees to chest. All together, take a breath in. Exhale, contract. So pull the knees in the direction of the chest. And now inhale, hands to knees, and exhale, knees to chest. Roll from side to side if you like, or stay still, whatever it's good for you. What's important here is to maintain awareness that the shoulders are away from our ears and to the best of our ability, our head is in a nice neutral position. The chin is neutral, it's neither tucked in nor uh, lifted up backwards, I should say. And let's all meet in the middle, coming into happy baby pose. Go ahead and take your hands in between your knees. You can grab your ankles, your big toe, and open up into happy baby pose. This is a nice pose because it also, just because of the position, uh, relaxes the lower back. So it, it lengthens the lower back down against the mat, opens up the hips. The goal is to have the feet flat. So then it's looking right up towards the sky. If it feels good, you can roll from side to side, or you can stay here in stillness, whichever it's good for you. Let's hold here. If you find that to hold this position, your shoulders are creeping up, you can't get them down, then lower your hands to your ankles, uh, behind your calves, or even with the hands on the outside of your legs, behind your thighs. Because you want the you want the shoulders and the back of the neck to be nice and relaxed. Let's stay here for eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, and one. As we exhale, let's straighten those knees and bring the legs together. <coughs> Pointing out towards the sky, we keep the hands to the sides, palms up. In this position, bend the knees. Knees are over the hips now, nice spinal twist. So take a breath in. And as you exhale, knees right, you look left. And hold. Close your eyes. Get out of your own way and simply focus on being aware of your body position and the movement of your breath. And coming to the center all together, take a breath in, exhale, contract. So roll to center. And then on your next exhale, knees left, you look right.
And then all together from the out and the right in. And so we try it. So it's from the center. And as you exhale, bring the feet back onto the mat and roll to one side. Sit up. And let's end this session in supported waterfall like we did yesterday. So remember, your options are you lay back, you put your hands underneath your butt, thumbs pointed in. And this is really nice and relaxing on the lower back. You can also do the very same thing with a block underneath your butt. Just figure out where you put it so that your lower back is completely uh, at ease. The weight should be on the upper shoulder. And you can also use a firm cushion. So let's all meet in that position. Remember, once you get in position, do not move your leg from side to side. Let's stay here for three minutes. How many of you are going to see? If your legs get fatigued, go ahead and bend the knees. Hands can be holding your block or cushion or extend it to the sides or over your head, wherever it feels good.
Just safely come out of this position, bend your knees, bring your hands to your cushion or your block. Bring your feet down to the mat. Gently take that block and push it away. One more time, let's bring our knees towards the chest. Inhale, hands to knees, exhale, knees to the chest, roll from side to side. And then I'll meet in the middle, and as you exhale, release your legs down to the mat. Release the hands to the mat, arms up. And we're in Savasana. Coming out of our samatha, changing our point of awareness, let's bring our hands to our belly and just feel the breath. Expand the awareness now to movement of toes and fingers, ankles and wrists. Mindfully expand that awareness to movements, left knee, right knee. Left elbow, right elbow, left hip, right hip, left shoulder, right shoulder. Gently twisting from side to side as the spine moves, letting the head move from side to side. Nothing is automatic. We're mindfully being aware that we're asking our body to enjoy these movements.
Put it all together. Let's exhale and roll to one side. With the support of your hands, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, sit up. Find your comfortable seated position. Continue returning our hands to the nice chin mudra, arms up. Eyes closed. Take a few breaths and find that quiet place again that you enjoyed during your savasana. All together, inhale, bring your hands to heart center and share the front of one time. Take a breath in. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And exhale, let's bow down to the teacher within. And inhale, come up, gently open the eyes, go back in full awareness, ready for the day. Thanks, everybody. Have a great.